Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flat Thunder channel. My name's Andy and this is Johnny number five, my heister forklift. Uh, she's an old girl and if you follow her along on the channel, you'll know she lifts, we rebuilt the cylinders, but she does not like to stop. Uh, we got a serious problem where basically we just ram stuff. Uh, that's not good, definitely not good. So we're gonna tear into these brakes today we also have a little bit of a hydraulic leak on the side shift cylinder, which is driving me insane. We're going to have to maybe address that as well. Most importantly, the brakes. This thing needs to stop without ramming stuff. So apparently you got to pull the axle to I have no idea what thread those are. Just took the axle out, but the only thing that really is... I have no idea. Something is holding this hub onto the spindle. There we go. That seal is just a big plate. Now the bearing is back here. Loot. Doesn't fit in the axle. Ah! Old fashioned way it is. Banner. Lock ring. Bearing. Ah. Uh, I think I found out why the brakes don't work. Brake lining. None of it. Obvious reason why it's not working. 
Here's the brake lining material off of the rear shoe that fell out when we took it off. Uh, we're definitely going to need some new shoes and probably a new wheel cylinder. All right, I'm trying to shoehorn this old brake shoe off of here to get a better look at it. There it is, and it definitely has not had any brake shoe on it for a while. I'm guessing this liner went there. Front feels like it's fully intact, just we're missing it here. Problem being is I don't know the part number for this. Do you know the part number for this? It's got kind of like a increased boss down here. This is a nine inch internal diameter drum and they're about two inches wide. They're about two inches wide. So something's wrong or missing there. It doesn't look right. A while ago I was making these branded leather coasters on the old laser here. Uh, it's a pretty cool little, I guess, novelty project but with that I have this leather stock and I have an idea I'm gonna get crazy with it and we're gonna try to affix that leather piece well, these are raw side out to this brake shoe. That's plan anyways. <laughs> Seems like if I just ran it smooth, here comes the meat wagon again. Talk about some really tough material. We went after this thing with a sanding disc on the angle die grinder, a manual wire brush, and then ultimately ended up with a wire brush on the angle die grinder. And we had to really just get after it. Uh, you couldn't set in one spot and try to rough it up because it didn't really work. It would kind of smooth itself out. So I had to kind of bounce it. And that's about the only way I could get any indentations or scuffs on it. Isn't that ironic? You sit down in a piece of leather, leather upholstery or a car car with leather seats next thing you know you get a mark on it here this stuff's awesome i mean super tough material uh probably going to get after it with the knife and make a couple slits in it uh, to try to increase the surface area we're going to try to glue it to this shoe and rivet it uh we'll see how it goes i've never done this before uh but we're going to give it a shot see what happens it's got to be better than no shoe at all right have this Loctite two-part epoxy, professional heavy-duty epoxy. Sets in five minutes. I've had this since 2008 or 2009. It looks like it's still liquid, kind of. we got nothing to lose. We're going to give it a go and hope it sticks. That looks good.
And just like that, have a brake shoe not made in China. Obviously, this isn't 100% the best solution, but they have used leather as brake linings before. I know wheel horse tractors use them for low speed applications in their transmissions. I think old industrial applications used to use leather wraps uh, for clutches and uh, various other drive systems. So I think this is going to work. What you didn't see or what you may not have understood what I was doing at the end there, these are aluminum rivet heads. So if these do protrude, which they probably will after this wears a little bit, the aluminum rivet will dig into the drum and it'll just wear the aluminum away because the aluminum's way softer than that steel or cast drum. Looks pretty cool. Let's get it back on old Johnny number five. Dusted it really quickly with the wire wheel uh, just to get some of the excess crap out of there. Not really a good job. We should take the whole thing off. But we're not going to do that until we have replacement parts. Now we're going to get in behind here. There's a bleeder there. I don't know what the chances of that's going to actually come loose. Uh, but we're going to give it a shot. We're going to try to loosen that bleeder. Um, and see if we can't bleed that once we get the uh, shoe back on. Got this back on there, tightened the bearing retainer nut until she got nice and tight, and then backed it off a quarter of a turn. Spinning pretty freely. Uh, normally I would grease those, uh, but since this is automatic transmission, I don't really want the grease going back in the transmission. So we raised it up, and we're going to try to fill the hub here with ATF. Remember if that was on there or not. Gonna have to look. We got the wheel back on. We got our brake shoe with our custom leather brake lining. We blood this brake. We need to address some other things in the control station up here. 
But right now, let's just see if this gives us any stopping power. Let's see if we did any good. All right, that's not a good sign. We got to uh, tear off this uh, cover on the control panel here and start looking at the connection to the master cylinder. I'm only getting like this much travel of the pedal. Uh, yeah. And it goes through that much movement until it starts to push the master cylinder. And then it pushes it. That's the only stroke that it gets. And a lot of that is because of this here. This is no good. Well, we got the uh, actuating rod removed. It has a egged out bushing here. The rubber boot, unfortunately, was already torn and wasn't going to come off of there, so we had to end up tearing it the rest of the way to remove it. Let's take this thing over to the bench vise and see if it has any more adjustment in there. I highly doubt it, uh, and maybe we'll make a new bushing for it real quick. does have more adjustment it's a good sign let's take it over to old Johnny number five and see how that looks that looks a whole lot better there if it's releasing let's uh, get the battery back on there fire it up and give this a try All right, we got stopping power in old Johnny number five. We didn't ram into anything to stop. That's different. If you uh, like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave your questions and comments in that section below. And don't forget to punch that subscribe button your way out. Thanks for watching, everyone. Say, uh, I have no idea what the model number is on this old forklift. There is no ID tag. And the part number on the frame here that identifies it or serial number it's completely worn off so I have no idea if you know what the correct model and or correct part numbers for those brake parts are drop down in the comment section let me know or shoot me an email I have no idea I really was trying to buy the correct pieces and it looked like I was gonna end up with a whole bunch of wrong parts because there's just way too many I think that leather wrap will do just fine for what we need to do with this old forklift it actually stops now and goes. When we first bought it, it barely went and definitely didn't stop at all. So we're moving in the right direction. Still need to address that side chest cylinder though.